them or something they saw God do throughout the week. So, um, we'll probably be hearing a lot of this. Um, but one of the days we were able to go to what's called the Bate, um, where it's the most impoverished areas. And I don't know if you're watching, there were just pictures of um, before before I um, But we were walking around, and everyone was just filthy and dirty. And there were some, one of the little girls was wearing the same outfit for a month. Um, and it was so crazy just looking around and seeing. 15 year olds that were pregnant that already had a kid and just stuff that we don't see around here um, and my heart just melted and I there was this one little girl I couldn't I couldn't let go of her and um, I knew that she didn't have much time left to live because of how sickly and how starving she was and it just it made me think why do, why am I staying? Like my plan has always been to stay in the United States. Like why, why go anywhere else? You know, but why stay in the United States? I mean, I can go wherever God's calling me to go, and I love the Dominican Republic so much. I fell in love with the people there. So I really this week I felt God calling me to go somewhere else. To I want to teach. I want to teach kids. So why teach in America? Why not teach in the Dominican Republic at the school we worked at? Or Africa or anywhere, wherever God's calling me, I'm, I just became so open to God's plan to speak about something that was difficult for So one way I saw God working this week was through the baseball team that we played against. Um, the coach, the baseball coach, was his name was Moses. He uh, raised his, well, he's raising his baseball team to be really godly men. And when we would go out in the streets, they would be protecting us along the way, and they would make sure we were safe on the sidewalk, or they would stop traffic for us to cross. And then in baseball practices, if there was one customer, or if there was something that they, that was not going right for them, they would end the practice for that day, just because they want to honor God. So it's cool to see how God's working through Moses and his baseball team. Um, mine also uh, is kind of like Molly's. Um, we went to the Mate, as she said, um, and right away you just you saw the pover impoverished people and the depravity that they had. Uh, and so we uh, we got the honor of touring their little community, and um, Pastor Cedro took. Uh, the boys and stuff, and they went um, to help build something for a little girl who um, was disabled. And you'll, you'll see pictures, but um, anyways, the girls went on to tour with Pastor Cedro's wife. And there was this one old lady um, who right away gave us all hugs. And um, it was like she didn't have good clothes, she um, looked dirty, she had like really long nails, like, and like they were, her body was just not in good shape. And um, she, she still walked around and followed us the whole time, gave us hugs the whole time, um, and smiled. Uh, and so she ended up sitting by her house, and um, she asked Pastor C. Joe's wife to come over. Um, and then um, she asked if we could pray for her because she was having knee problems. And, um, and so she's like, oh, of course. So um, we, I couldn't really understand Pastor C. Joe's wife, but um, it was one of the most moving prayers I've ever been through. Um, Molly, Linda, and I, and Pastor Shido's wife all went around her, um, and I held her hand, and like her hand was like shaking and stuff, and because she couldn't get like a super good grip on my hand, um, but just just experiencing that, and she she still had joy through her pain, and um, and then um, just like another thing, Tyler spoke about joy and trials in James that night um, for a church service, and just just seeing that there that. Some people did still have joy in trials they face every single day. Was just it was mind blowing to me because like we go through little stuff and then we like have the hardest time going through that, and sometimes we lose that joy for like that moment. But they kept it day in and day out, and so it's just that was just super moving to see. So. Uh, my high 
well, my spiritual high or whatever. It's the same thing. Um, so it was definitely, I think, kind of the church service uh, slash bonfire night type thing. Um, so it, for me, uh, the language very really affected me. Like, I, I really wish I could have talked to the people more and gotten to know them. Like, that was definitely something I wish I could do. Um, but through the service, uh, through the Sunday service and Tuesday night service, we had some. And then Thursday night, we had a bonfire with them. And it was really cool, even though like, there's that language barrier, and even though uh, we can't talk to each other, we still had unity in Christ. And that was something really cool for me to see. Uh, even though that was there, we were able to worship the same God. We were able to just be able to fellowship with one another. Uh, even though there's that language barrier, we can have that unity in Christ. So that was really cool because that, that night we had a bonfire and we sang songs. We, we exchanged different songs, even though a couple of those was a little weird. Um, <laughs> you would not believe that. <laughs> um, but it was just really cool to just uh, be able to spend time with people and uh, be able to uh, just show how much you care about people, even though you can't say it with your words, you can show it through action. So. Okay, um, one of the greatest um, spiritual emphasis that emphasize, emphases, English teachers, emphases, I'm so going. Um, one of the greatest emphases that I saw through this week was specifically a pastor teacher. And he's the pastor there of the church that's inside the complex that we're working at. And he has such a, um, a following in the community. So like, everyone in the community, when they look at him, they know who he is, and they know what he's doing for the community. They know that he's He's trying to help, but they also know that he's there to show God's love. Um, one of the ways that I saw that was he has a ministry that's involved in shoe shining, and everyone has these these um, black pair of shoes that can be shined. And so he goes around the community, and like Eliana said, the baseball team would follow him. It's kind of like Jesus calling the disciples, you know, like come follow me and um, watch how I do this. And so he went around with his disciples and he started to shine shoes for free. And as he's shining shoes, he, he said to us earlier that these people become your slaves when you're doing something for them. So that your slaves, they have to listen to you. And so he went around and, sh and while the baseball team shined shoes, he would give the message of the gospel through shining the shoes. And so he would say, you know, I can, I can shine your shoes, I can clean, I can clean your house, I can wash your motorcycle, but there's one thing that I can't clean, and that's with your sins. I can't clean your hearts. Only Jesus can do that. And so he went into the gospel through that, and it's just a really, really cool experience to see um, just how, how much of an influence he had on the people in the community, but also the people inside the compound, so like the baseball team. They followed, they listened to him because they respected him, because they knew that he wanted to show God's love. Okay, so this is kind of adding on to Zach's, but it was really cool just to see the joy in people's hearts at the church services. And I mean, right when they walk into the church, they get down on their knees and they just pray to God in order to, pray, to prepare their hearts to do what's happening. So basically, when we think of worship, we tend to think of songs and worshiping Jesus through music. But when they do it, they see worship as in everything they do. In every single thing that they do, they worship Jesus. So I thought it was just really cool to see.
distributing food to the different houses. And um, <clears throat> we gave a bag of rice and beans and that for like a day because they had huge families. But we gave it to this one lady and she was so happy and um, she thanked us and then she gave us six mangoes which was like a lot of food for them. And like she just wanted to give us something and it impacted me because um, how many times, like I have so much stuff and like I don't even really give people things I guess, but just like being more generous is something that I would like to work on and yeah. their eyes without hope and they're kind of empty they're looking somewhere that far away without a focus and th then there was some big opening there was some women there start dancing and singing and we know uh, that are ladies that live in church there so and there's a baby they passed me I was holding her for long hours hours while I'm seeing all the kids running around without clothes and they have no childhood, they're playing nothing besides rocks. So that was really, and then I realized, uh, Linda told me that uh, uh, surviving for the kids, for babies, is only 30%, so 70% of them will die just because of poverty and without food. And there's still a lot of people that women that enjoy gospel, enjoy, I, I don't know what they enjoy, but they just have a passion about God, so that was like really touching. Mm -hmm. 